Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of King Tech. I'm your host, Corey here, and Apple just announced a bunch of new products, and I wanna give you my first impressions about what I'm liking about these products, what I'm not liking about these products, and just give you a complete overview of everything they just announced. So, let's go. All right, so jumping right into it, the first product we got right off the bat was a new HomePod Mini. Now, me, myself, I've never actually even seen a HomePod in anybody's home, but I think this is Apple's play to get more HomePods into people's home. They started off the HomePod Mini at a, start, at a new price of $99, and as the name suggests, it's just a smaller HomePod. Now, I do think there were some original um, shortcuts with the original HomePod, and I don't know if this one necessarily addressed all those shortcomings, but I think the fact that they came in a lower price is going to help them get this product into more people's homes. And they kind of did a really good job of showing off all the features of this. So for one, the biggest thing with the HomePod and same thing with the HomePod Mini is going to be the sound quality. And this, the HomePod Mini is no, it didn't take any shortcuts with this one. This one has amazing sound quality as you can expect from the, like, as you can expect from the original one. Um, they also announced a bunch of new cool, like little, Apple ecosystem tricks. And I think that's really what I'm gonna get people hooked at because that's kind of where they have the leg up over say um, Google or Amazon with their home devices. If you have, or if you're in that Apple ecosystem, you already have the iPhone, you have the Apple Watch, you have the iPad then having the HomePod Mini is gonna let you do so many more things that you're not necessarily able to do with those other ecosystems. So for one, there's this new intercom feature where you can say, hey, you know, Siri, you know, let everybody know it's time for dinner. And she'll send out notifications to everybody in the family, let them know it's time for dinner. There's new features where you can look up direction to a restaurant, it'll automatically send it to Apple CarPlay inside your car. Um, there's just so many different things that you're gonna be able to do with the Apple HomePod that you won't be able to do with other, you know, smart assistant devices because the fact that Apple keeps that ecosystem so close knit and they have the best opportunity here with this new HomePod Mini starting at $99, being able to give you something that you can use inside your home and if you're already, like I said, in the Apple ecosystem, it's gonna give you a much more, you know, cohesive kind of home, smart home feel. Um, so kudos to Apple for bringing it in a lower price. Like I said, I've never actually seen the HomePod in anybody's home, so hopefully this is their way of getting that HomePod into more people's homes and getting Apple users some smart features that they can use on their phones and stuff like that that they didn't necessarily have to be able to get with the Amazon Echo devices and the Google Home because like I said, that, that ecosystem is a little bit closed off to other services. Next up though, we got the new iPhones. And <laughs> as an Android user, I'm always genuinely excited for new iPhones because iPhones always tend to push the smartphone market further. When iPhones got wireless charging, there were a bunch of new wireless charging pads on the market and I appreciated that so much. Um, so when Apple does something, it tends to push the market, you know, to a new height in that particular field. Now, the whole play with the new iPhones right off the bat was 5G. Now, Android phones, of course, have had 5G over the last year or so, but more people use iPhones in the US is just the fact of it. And when they, like I said, when they do something, it tends to push the market further. So of course, the new iPhones were announced, Verizon comes out and says, hey, we have 5G nationwide now. So just to, just to prove my point, when they do something, it tends to push the market further in that particular segment. So now is 5G something to buy a new iPhone for? No, if you're buying a new iPhone for 5G, save your money. 5G is not ready. The carriers are not ready. T-Mobile's not ready. Verizon's not ready, AT&T is not ready. I know you've been seeing commercials everywhere, but they are not ready to give you the true 5G experience. Will they be ready a year from now? Possibly, but as of right now, they're not ready. So save your money if you're looking to buy a new iPhone because of 5G, that's not it. Now, we did get four new models of iPhones. So let me run down those real quick. We have the iPhone 12 mini, keeping with this mini name. Uh, we have the regular iPhone 12, which is gonna be basically successor to the iPhone 11. You know, the regular version that I did the review on last year. I'll drop that video down in the link so you can check that out. Uh, then we have the iPhone 11, 
I mean, iPhone 12 Pro, and then we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So Apple's giving you a bunch of different options at a bunch of different price points this year to kind of help with people that want to get into the iPhone ecosystem that necessarily wouldn't be able to get in, you know, at those higher thousand dollar price points. So kudos to Apple once again for making the consumer, you know, seem like they can get, you know, into the ecosystem at any price. Like we got the Apple Watch SE last month. So there's a lot of different things Apple's doing to help people get into the ecosystem and get you locked in there. Um, but let's start with the iPhone 12. So this, like I said, is gonna be a successor to the iPhone 11. We have the same camera set on the back, but the biggest upgrade this year to the iPhone 12, and the one I am most excited about with the iPhone 12, is the fact that we're finally moving to OLED and we're finally moving to a full HD screen. So last year's iPhone 11 had an LCD screen and I kind of complained about it last year. It wasn't, it wasn't a deal breaker for the phone, but when you're interacting with your phone, the first thing you're interacting with is the screen and having a really good screen is something that most Android phones have. I'm a Samsung user most of the time, so they literally have the best screens on any phone, hands down. So for the C iPhone, slowly stepping up their game when it comes to screen, um, the screen technology, having the OLED, it's nearly bezel-less this year. We still have the notch, but you know, that's that's not going anywhere. Um, I'm, I'm, I love to see it. I'm glad that they are finally putting better screens on this phone. And I think that's going to be the best feature of the iPhone 12 this year is the fact that you're still gonna have those amazing cameras, but you're also gonna have this beautiful OLED, full HD, HDR screen. Um, when you're watching your content, Netflix, YouTube, whatever content you're watching is gonna look so much better on the new iPhones this year. And I think that that's gonna help sell this phone a lot more. Now, they also announced the mini version. So the iPhone 12 is gonna have a 6.1 inch screen and then the iPhone 12 mini is gonna have a 5.4 inch screen. And also another really cool feature they announced with the new iPhone 12 devices is this feature called MagSafe. And what MagSafe allows you to do is basically connect a magnetic uh, wireless charger to the back of your phone. So if you're familiar with MagSafe at all, it's a it was a magnetic magnetic charger, sorry, for the older MacBooks that you plug into your MacBook. And it kept you from basically kicking your entire MacBook off the table because when you hit the cord, it would just pull away. Um, but the wireless charger on this is only 15 watts, which isn't groundbreaking, um, but it's just cool to have. Now, what I think is gonna be the coolest feature of this new MagSafe technology that are introduced with the new iPhone 12 is the actual fact that you can attach different accessories to the back of the phone now using this MagSafe connector. So one of the really cool ones is you're gonna have a wallet you can attach to, or they're gonna be different cases. And then also, also Apple announced there's gonna be new um, third party retailers that are going to be making different devices for this MagSafe. I think Belkin's making a wireless charger um, that's going to be for your car. A lot of just different cool stuff that they're allowing you to, you know, attach to the back of the phone and just another another cool feature that you have with your iPhone. I mean, that's really what it is. They're, they're trying to get you locked more and more into that ecosystem with the cases and the charger, but I'm really happy that Apple's introducing something new to the phone and not just giving us, you know, the same old, same old. So that's really cool. So that's pretty much it for the new iPhone 12s. Um, and then also we have the iPhone 12 Pro. So we have the iPhone 12 Pro and then iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now these are your Apple's heavy hitters and the main focus and talk about these was the camera. So let's just dive right into that feature because that's really what you're gonna be here for. If you're looking at the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, it's really gotta be for the cameras. I don't know just from my initial thoughts about this, if it's really worth spending the extra 200 to $300 for the Pro and Pro Max, if you're not really in, in it for the camera. So um, with the new iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, of course it's gonna have 5G. This is gonna have Apple's new 814 Bionic chip. And of course, these are gonna be the most powerful chips that Apple's ever made and the most powerful chips in any smartphone. Nobody's denying that. Um, but what you're really, like I said, you're getting here is the camera. So there's going to be a new LiDAR sensor and that's going to be what they use for augmented, for augmented reality. So this is gonna basically take a depth map of your surroundings, 
it's gonna be able to see in complete darkness. They're gonna use it for autofocus. They're gonna do a lot of really cool things with this new LiDAR sensor. It's the same sensor that's on the iPad Pro. So I'm really excited to see what they do with this. Not as on the phones, I think they're gonna start, you know, letting developers play with it. We're gonna get, we're gonna get a lot more um, out of this sensor now that it's on the iPhone. Also with the iPhone, we're gonna get those triple cameras array. So you're gonna get your regular telephoto, you're gonna get your wide angle, and you're gonna get your ultra wide angle. But this year, that's actually gonna be a difference between the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max for as the sensors go. So with the 12 Pro, you're going to get a, you're gonna get all three of those cameras, but the 12 Pro Max is gonna have a lower aperture when it comes to the cameras. So you're going to get better low light performance from the iPhone 12 Pro Max versus the iPhone 12 Pro. And with that new A14 Bionic chip, Apple is unleashing a whole new slew of features when it comes to these cameras. Um, one of the coolest to me is gonna be the fact that you can use this phone to take end-to-end -end HDR video, you can edit it on your phone, you can share it on your phone, you can do everything from your phone when it comes to recording 4K, 60 frames per second HDR video. There are $2,000, $3,000 cameras that can't do what this $1,100 and $1,000 iPhone is gonna be able to do as far as camera and videos. Um, so I'm really excited to get that in my hands and try those things out. And I think that's really what the push is. If you're considering getting an iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max over the iPhone 12, that's really what you're getting it for. If you're really into video, if you're really into taking really good pictures, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max are going to be um, what you're looking for. Now, I've said this before, if they're gonna call phones Pro, I need Pro features, and they've delivered Pro features with the cameras, but we're still missing a few things that I don't necessarily think a Pro device should be missing. For instance, the iPad Pro has USB-C. The iPhone, the iPhone Pro, Apple 12, the Apple, <laughs> iPhone 12 Pro does not have USB-C charging. You might be like, well, you know, my lightning adapter's cool. You just mentioned the Max, if I'm gonna get that. But being able to carry one cable and charge every device that Apple sells is going to be the idea. And I know Apple's probably looking to move towards this future where there's even, there, where you're no longer charging in devices where everything is portless, but we're not there yet. And I think the iPhones should have came with USB-C. If I can, like I said, if I can carry that one cable around and charge up everything, that would have been amazing. Next up, there's no 120 Hertz refresh rate, which the I iPad Pro does have. I wish we could have seen it on the iPhone 12. Um, Having a high refresh rate on the phone just makes the phone seem so much smoother and faster. And if you've seen the I, iPad Pro, it's it's really something you got you, you you notice. And I think Apple's claim that people won't really notice it really doesn't hold weight with me because I feel like it's something that you're offering on the iPad Pro. Why not the iPhone Pro? Like why why not give it to us on that device too? So they cut a few corners in my opinion, but overall the iPhones that they announced this year have a, a lot of cool features. Um, we also got new glass on the front of the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. Um, that's gonna be four times less likely to break if you drop them. Um, like I said, we got that MagSafe feature. We have better cameras. We have better screens. The iPhone 12 Pro screens actually got slightly larger from last year. So I think from 6.5 to 6.7 for the Pro Max. And I think giving us better screens and better cameras is cool, but let's just go all the way out with it. The technology is there, give it to us. Um, they also, kudos to Apple though, they also did double the storage in the new iPhone. So they go from 64 to 128 gigs right off the back, which is really nice and cool. So really happy to see that from Apple. Um, I think overall, Apple gave us some really good devices and I'm excited to try them out. I'm really try, excited to try out these new cameras. I think that's the name of the game. Like I said, they did announce that these phones have 5G, but you don't buy these phones with 5G. 5G isn't ready. So with all that being said, I'm going to buy one. I'm going to try it out. I'm excited. But like I said, I feel like there's a few other things that they could announce or gave us with these phones that would have made me really excited. But you know, it's always next year, right? That's what we all see with iPhones. It's always next year. 
But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or if you want to know more about something, please leave me a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. We're almost at 100. So I'll just catch you in the next one. All right. Peace out.